Bosch is out with a brand new Bosch Performance CX Generation 5. And what Bosch told us at the launch event was it's not called the Generation 5. And the previous motor, it, it wasn't called Generation 4. No, this is the BDU38. I'm not sure it's gonna stick because when looking at press kits, press releases for other bikes, they refer to it as the Generation 5. Anyway, it's a new motor and it's very silent. No more rattling noise. You guys have been complaining. Yeah. <laughs> you have been complaining. <laughs> and uh, now we did our homework and now it solved the problem. <laughs> it seems the motor rattle is gone. And the noise, the whine while riding the motor too is greatly reduced. It's, I would guess, less noisy than this motor, which is the Bosch Performance SX, the 55 Nm motor that was launched just over a year ago. So the new Bosch CX, it's an 85 Nm motor, just like the old one. And it's a 600 watts max just like the old one. But the reason I've got the Bosch SX here, it's twofold. Firstly, I haven't really got the CX motor. We couldn't bring it home with us. And also this SX motor, it represents the, a shift in generations, a new motor design with the two volt pattern to fix the motor in the frame. It might not sound like much, but I think removing the third fixture point it has reduced the weight of the motor it's partly to blame for the weight reduction which it's it's only about 100 grams i see figures from between 2.8 to 2.85 kilos for this new motor so about 100 grams lighter than the gen 4 which bosch referred to as the bdu 37. so other than the new motor fixing points. Isn't there anything else that's new? I mean the same power, the same power amplification at 340 percent? Well yes there is and the new Bosch Performance CX it's a much more refined motor. There are some great changes to this motor that I really like but it just looking at the specs you wouldn't know. I think Apart from the motor being much more silent, both on the load and while coasting, which is a great thing. I mean, I didn't really, it didn't bother me that much having the old Gen 4 motor or the Shimano motor with the motor rattle. But once you ride a motor that doesn't have this rattle, you, it's a relief. I really appreciate having one less noise piece of noise coming from the bike. But um, the other big thing, it's uh, how the motor is tuned. There are new sensors in the motor. Uh, there is like an inertial sensor that uh, is measuring mo the bike position, movement up, down, sideways, uh, rotation, whatever. And there is a new cadence sensor. It's a much higher sample rate than the older sensor. You barely have to move the pedals to have the motor activating. We have done our regular tests, getting on the bike, putting a foot on the pedal, and without moving, there was like on one occasion, I felt a slight twitch in the pedals, indicating that the motor was sort of about to activate. But for the most part, you could put the foot on the pedal and there would, be, there would be no reaction from the motor. But as soon as you start moving, not like with older motors, you had to use one foot to sort of push you forward a bit, rotating the wheels and cranks a bit before the motor kicks in. Now the motor, it just kicks in instantly. So the power is there once you need it. Very quick to activate. And we also tested the motor over and pedaling into a rock section, root garden, whatever, and uh, stop pedaling to have the bike just push us over a rock and then start pedaling 
again without losing the motor power that worked fine and you're able to dose to adjust how much overrun you want the harder you hit the pedals before you stop pedaling the longer the overrun or extended boost as Bosch calls it will last that's really nothing that new Bosch always used to have that but uh, it seems very easy to control and to determine how much I want and then the biggest deal is how easy the motor is to control when riding in technical sections track standing trying to keep your balance you want to go slightly forward without hitting an obstacle so you just push slightly and you get a little bit of power you don't get a surge pushing you forward into the obstacle you were trying to avoid so that's that's great yeah, so yeah. one main yeah, goal was uh, yeah, to get rid of the rattling noise. noise. Yeah. Be a bit lighter, yeah, but have the same good uh, responsiveness or even better yeah. than the current. So you're not able to. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they've succeeded. Mr. Schlie was responsible for development of the ride assist modes. So he made like, he created the MTB mode and such. And being a trails rider, he wanted an e-bike that would assist you in doing things on the bike you didn't want a motor that would limit you so on most mtb motors doing this uh, signature trails move the back wheel jump it's been very difficult or even impossible on previous motors but that was a main goal for developing this motor the new bosch cx gen 5 According to him, I didn't really try. It was great for doing the back wheel jump. If you go and you just want to make some kind of this move. Every trice rider uh, who uh, would like to make a back wheel hop would notice uh, um, the difference. The back wheel hop, the back wheel hop is, just a, is just a symbol okay. uh, that um, the bike is uh, Combining the energy of the motor and your personal energy without any energy loss in the right direction uh, So you have a super efficient way to uh, create your ideas on the bike yeah. So having this motor that is very precise with the power it leashes out It's what I would call a natural feeling motor and uh, Can a natural feeling motor have a motor over and there's nothing natural about stopping pedaling and the motor keeps pushing the bike keeps pushing on but it depends on the situations when uh, riding gnarly low speed stuff you mostly won't access the motor overrun and when you do want the motor overrun for clearing an obstacle without pedaling you pedal and then push hard just before you start coasting and uh, yeah, while it's nothing natural about that, it doesn't really matter. In the situations where you want a natural motor, it feels natural and easy to control. The Bosch Performance CX always was a motor that would give you lots of power at, as the cadence increased. And that hasn't changed with the CX Gen 5. And we talked to a technician, Sebastian. For the first time, I got to see how a torque curve looks for an EMTB. Into the motor. What we have with our motors is at the moment we have a limit which is 600 watts. Okay? And um, we have a torque with a CX, it's 85 Newton meter. And so here we have the RPM range, the cadence, yep. right? And at the 85 Newton meters, um, with 85 newton meters you have a ramp up like that it's quite linear or it's yeah. linear yeah. until we reach this 600 watt limit yeah. and then it's 600 watt and it's around 75 okay. it's 65 i think 65. Yeah. yeah torque starts off at 85 newton meters and it's 85 newton meters flat at the same time the power ramps up until it reaches 600 watts and this happens at a cadence of 65 that's the target max power so as the cadence increases above 
65 RPM, you have to drop the torque. So it's a flat torque curve that drops off as soon as the motor hits 600 watts uh, and it just slopes down linearly. And the power curve, as soon as it reaches 600 watts, it's 600 watts flat until over 130 RPM. My impression always was the Bosch motor was uh, more powerful towards the at higher pedaling frequencies and there are other motors that will amplify the rider input more at very low cadence but uh, i think this bosch curve looks very well looks very good and uh, it's an interesting and clever design i think just having the full motor power from 65 rpm cadence that's more than enough i think really and uh, who needs 600 watts at 135 rpm? The whole point of this is you're riding your bike and you suddenly decide I want to do a sprint and just increase the cadence as much as possible before an obstacle or a, a short climb or whatever. And uh, you will do quite high cadence when you just sprint as fast as you can for a short while. Sebastian wasn't the only technician we got to talk to. We got to have a chat about batteries with uh, Vikram. There are two new batteries. Previously, we had the PowerTube 625 and the PowerTube 750. Those batteries are gone now, as far as I know. And we get the PowerTube 600, so about the same size as the 625, but it's like 600 grams lighter or more. And this is a different cell configuration using the 21700 cells with 5.6 amp hour cells. So it's new battery tech. And it's the same thing with the bigger battery, the 800 watt hours battery. It's uh, about 500 grams lighter than the old 750. So a bit smaller, way lighter. And these two batteries, they use the same battery cells as the Bosch Compact Tube 400 that was introduced with the Bosch SX motor. Uh, so we have this cells also, uh, which we use in the power tube 600 and 800. Yeah. And also previously uh, for the Model 24 Compact Tube 400, it's the same yeah, cell. that's right. <laughs> and uh, we talk in terms of watt hours. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, let's say the ampere hours, like you said, it's a 5.6 ampere yeah. hour cell uh, times a 3.6 volt normal. Yeah. Uh, so we are at around uh, 20 watt hour in terms of energy. Yeah. We wanted to all have a, really the 20 watt hour cells so that we can have a 600 watt hour and an 800 watt hour battery. Yeah. The sort of cool thing with these batteries is as long as there is room in the down tube, and I'm talking about room this way, both batteries will fit in the same compartment. And also the 400 battery will fit, but that's a much shorter battery. So I guess you would need an adapter of some sort. There are brands out now that allows you to choose the battery size. And I think M1, they will allow you to combine the new Bosch Performance CX with a 400 watt hours battery. And uh, is that a good idea? Yeah, well, I think it is actually, because you could get the range extender in addition. So you can choose if you want a strong and light bike for shorter rides and just slap on the power more 250, 250 watt hours range extender for a total of 650, which is decent. Or you, you could, of course, combine this uh, range extender with uh, the two other batteries too, giving you up to 1050 watt hours. And what M1 does is allows, they allow you to combine the SX motor with both the 400 and the 600 watt hours battery, but not the 800. I think it's cool with the interchangeability. Uh, what? is sort of less cool is that uh, there is no backwards compatibility for the motor and the batteries as far as I know. In other news there are new displays, well at least one, but there are signs of more displays to come because many of the bikes we are seeing these days they have sort of a black plastic plate between the Bosch, uh, this Bosch LED unit and the frame indicating that there will be 
other displays, bigger displays in the down tube fitting in that space. But what we do know is there is a new display, the Purion 400. It's a small 1.6 inch compact display that sits next to the stem mounted to the handlebars, just like the regular display on the Shimano EP8. And uh, yeah, it's a compact, well-protected, well-hidden, nice display. Then there's the hill start. You stop mid-hill, steep climb, and uh, you want to get back on the bike, start riding again. Yeah, usually we get on the bike, hold the brake, start pedaling, release the brake. Not that big of a deal, really. But here is the hill start function. You get on the bike, and I guess I would still hold the brake, and you push the minus button on the remote and hold it, and the display will tell you hill start activated. And then you can let go of the brakes and just keep sitting on the bike for a while and get the pedals right, put one foot on the pedal, start riding and get going. And it's one of those functions that you never thought you wanted and difficult to see why you would need it. But once you've started using it, we appreciated this function quite surprisingly. So to sum it up, specs are the same, nothing new. Well, yeah, there are quite a few important changes like the motor noise and the improved motor control. Do we really need more than 85 Newton meters? What do we get from more power? We could ride a bit closer to motor cutoff speed with the same rider input. It would be marginal differences in speed, I guess. And how important is that? To me, it's much more important having a motor that doesn't hold me back, a motor that allows me to try to do new things on the bike and perhaps even assist me in doing these new things. And combine that with a rattle-free ride experience, at least motor rattle-free. And uh, it becomes a very pleasant motor, a very nice upgrade. But uh, if we look at the previous, the Gen 4 Performance CX, that motor received uh, a couple of updates during its lifetime. It got bumped by 10 Nm from 75 to 85 Nm, and it got the smart system update a couple of years later, making it much more controllable. Easy, easy to handle with lots of motor power. And um, who knows what Bosch has planned for the future. It's not impossible that this motor will change during its lifetime. That's it. Appreciate any likes and subscribes. Thanks for watching.